uh, for September the 30th, uh, 2020. I will be leading you into our program today. Um, I have, <clears throat> if you have a program, you'll notice that prayer says to be announced, scripture to be announced, statement of faith to be announced, and then announcements will be by Dr. Gilbert. And then I will come back and make the presentation for our guest today that I hope you will be excited about. And I hope that you will um, hear him. He's very talented, um, but we're gonna move forward now. So having said that, let us bow our heads in the word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, So I, so I actually stopped because we have a student that, that's coming in. So we do know that when we're listening and hearing God's word that we are to always just kind of stop where we are so that we could give respect to the Lord our God who is our creator, amen? amen. All right, so let's just all kind of take note of that. Uh, whenever I walk into a church service and uh, we're in the middle of preaching and there's no singing, then I stop until I get the attention of the usher who is going to direct me to my seat. Or if we are in prayer, then I stop and she holds me back. She or, or he holds me back until the prayer is over or completed and then usher me to my seat. These are some, um, just some noteworthy things that we should uh, be aware of as we're moving forward on this journey, because this is a journey. Now, again, let us bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning being so thankful that you are our God, and beside you there is none other. We ask, O oh, gracious Master, today that you would guide us and lead us and continue to direct us in the path by which we should go. Now, gracious Master, we thank you for your goodness, and we just ask that you would guide us always in our work and in our play, Guide us, O oh, gracious master, help us to have a zeal to want to continue to do better in this world, making this world a better place to live. These blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. For a scripture, I have chosen just a small uh, story that I read some years ago that was very inspiring to me. And I'd like to share it with you on this morning. The story goes that there was an old man who was um, on one side of a river. And he was looking, though, on the other side of the river. And he noticed that because he was noticing that the grass was much greener on the other side of the river. So he wanted to try and see how he could, he could get, get across and get over on the greener side. So the river, though, that he was uh, contemplating trying to swim across was very treacherous. There were boulders in that river. There were uh, tree trunks that would uh, occasionally uh, uh, go floating down the river. And, and, and the current was always swift. And it would uh, sometimes cause, cause the swimmers to kind of bump their heads or, or get hit by the tree trunks. Uh, and, 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 and nasty carcasses of birds and or dead animals. But he decided he was going to do it anyway. So the old man jumped in the river. And as he jumped in, sure enough, just as he thought, the currents just took over his body and he went swiftly down the river. He bumped his head against a boulder that was in the river. Tree trunk hit him and he was kind of pushed to the side but he continued to swim. He continued to swim because the other side where the grass was greener, that was his goal. And as he finally made it across to the other side, he lay on the grass, panting, panting, getting his breath, trying to see how, what he would do next. And he lay there panting and panting. And then he set up. And then he thought about it. 
And then he decided to build a bridge back to the side from whence he had come. Two young guys stopped him and they said to him, young man, old man rather, you, you, you've made it to the other side. Why, why would you build a bridge uh, to get back over? And he said, because there are some who may not have the agility that I have or the strength that I have. And I'm building the bridge so that it would make it easier for them to cross over. And that's the end of the story. But a thought for you, I hope that you will receive that you have received it the way it was intended. The old man, the bridge builder, what are you today? Are you a bridge builder? Think about it. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Marilyn Hayes will come and lead us in the statement of faith and she's going to ask your participation. Good morning, Shorter College. Good morning. Can we please stand for the statement of faith? Shorter College is an African American Pittsburgh church and is shaped by the Methodist tradition of understanding of sin, grace, and the possibility of full salvation for Christ like living. Shorter College embraces the equality, dignity, and worth of all persons and endeavors to be a campus community that reflects both in the diversity of the body of Christ. We believe that there but one with our body of parts of infinite power, wisdom, and goodness, the maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. In this unity, there are three persons of one substance, power, and eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who is the Word of the Father, the very and eternal God of one substance with the Father, took man's nature in the womb, the Blessed Virgin, so that the two holes and perfect natures, that is to say, the Godhead and manhood were joined together in one person, never to be divided, whereof is one Christ, very God and very man, who truly suffered, was crucified, dead and buried, to reconcile his father to us and to be sacrificed, not only for original guilt, but all the actual sins of men. We believe that Christ did truly rise again from the dead, and took again his body with all things appertaining to the perfection of man's nature, wherewith he sit and there sit until he returned to judge all men at the last day. We believe in the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son is the substance, majesty, and glory with the Father, the Son, very eternal God. We believe that the Holy Scriptures contain all things that sapped and that we infallible and authoritative word of God. Thank you. Now for the reason that you came, our presentation, our young man, the young man who has joined us this morning Actually, it's no stranger to Shorter College. He's been here before. And because he's so good, we continue to ask him to come and to be a part of um, this institution, which we call Shorter College. Uh, this young man grew up on the north side of, you know, on the north side in North Little Rock. He is a, a, a person who is aspiring to become greater and greater each and every day of his life. Chris James is a nationally known spoken word poet, 
speaker, teaching artist, and author. He is very relatable to all people. He has the power to evoke tears, laughter, and deep thinking. A true spoken word artist, Chris uses words to paint pictures of his reality in a way the world can relate and feel. Chris is currently evolving, a currently evolving artist that is truly using his art to impact his community. As a teaching artist, Chris integrates art into education by offering a creative approach through his teaching. His workshops focus on enhancing creative writing and literacy skills while creating opportunity for his audience to paint pictures with their words and to express themselves. Um, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and help me welcome Mr. Chris James, the spoken poet. How y'all doing? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It's a good mic. I like it. Uh, first off, uh, thank y'all for having me here. Um, we're gonna have a good time. Uh, so I'll be speaking, you know, to you all for the next, you know, uh, what you said, two hours. <laughs> No, that, that, that was a joke. <laughs> y'all were supposed to laugh. All right. Uh, so again, thank y'all for having me. Um, so here we go. I, wherever I go, I like it to feel like family. So one of my mentors, Marcus Montgomery, whenever he asked how y'all doing, you respond by saying the family is good. So in order for this to be like family, I'm, I'm going to pop it off in that manner. So when I ask you how you're doing, you respond by saying the family is good. And I know we got some folks on Zoom. Y'all can't really say it. So well, I'm, I'm looking at that way, but they right here, but they back here. So when I say how y'all doing, you respond by saying the family is good. How y'all doing? The family is good. Like an A minus, like a, a B minus. Let's get to an A plus. How y'all doing? The family is good. Right, we're going to start with a song. All right, I'm going to sing the song, good. and you guys are going to repeat the song back to me. Everybody say, oh, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. I like crowd participation. I like energy, because I'm about to get into a conversation or some dialogue in a second, and I need you guys to be rocking with me. Everybody say, cool. Here we go. Cool. Then I'm a poet. I got a song about poetry. This is a song I do wherever I am in the world. Woke up this morning, poetry on my mind. Woke up this morning, poetry on my mind. Words from my soul on these notebook lines. No money for food and no money for gas. No money for food. All I got is my pen and my pad. Give it up for yourselves. That was amazing. Yeah. All right. Cool beans. Cool beans. Uh, so check it out. So today, um, like I, can I be honest? Be honest. So I'm, I'm terrible right now. I, so thank God for Google Calendar, right? For putting stuff on the Google Calendar, because Google Calendar it'll, it'll remind you that you got something to do an hour before, or whatever you schedule it to tell you when you have something. Especially if you don't have an assistant, which I don't right now because COVID is happening, right? So anyway, it's 10 a.m. I just bought a, a, a you know a new property and I was remodeling. I'm doing about, about most of the work by myself, and I done got up this morning, threw on my work clothes, about to go over there and paint it up. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm like about to pull in. And then my Google Calendar goes off and says, show the college. And I was like, oh, shoot. So I went and threw my jeans on with my t-shirt. And I, and I made it more than on time. I was early. So, uh, so thank you to Google Calendar. Uh, if, if anybody who created Google is out there, thank you. Uh, so I'm here. So I'm going to talk to you all real organically. I hope you see what I got to talk about today. If you don't, just act like you'd like it anyway. I act like it's the most amazing thing in the world. So she said a lot about me, but I'm gonna kind of reintroduce 
by who I am and what I do and what I have done. Uh, so I'm 30 years old, grew up right here in North Little Rock on Washington Avenue and in Rose City, graduated from North Little Rock High School in 2008. Um, I'm a world-renowned spoken word poet, a part of a team called Foreign Tongues, who ranked number two in the world in 2014. Um, I used to own a newspaper called The Essence of Blackness from 2011 to 2012. I'm the author of three books. Uh, I'm the owner of the House of Art, which is right around the corner in Argentina. We've been there six years now. Uh, I am um, a United States cap United States Capitol keynote speaker. Uh, I'm a TED Talk speaker. I'm a, um, a nationally award-winning playwright. Uh, won Best Original Script at the Atlanta Black Theater Festival. Uh, I've, um, I'm a filmmaker. I've traveled the country doing a whole lot of amazing things, right? And what I want to talk about today is success and what it is and what it ain't, right? A lot of folks would look at my impressive resume and say that alone is the reason that I am successful, right? But it's not, you know? Like, yeah, it looked good, it sounds good, it's impressive when I walk in certain rooms and certain folks, but I personally want to tell you that all the money that I've made in my career, all the things that I've done in my career, all the newspaper articles, all the TV interviews, none of that is the true reason why I am a success, right? I'm not successful because I was a 16-year-old daddy and I made it out of that. I'm not successful because both of my brothers went to prison for 25 and 40 years and I didn't, right? But I am successful because what I've done in my career and in my life is with purpose, right? How many of you all think that because you make a lot, oh, because you make a lot of money, you're successful? Raise your hand if you think a lot of money makes you successful. Let's be honest. We got one person that's going to tell the truth, all right? Well, I want y'all to think about all the folks in the world who have had a million dollars, who have the house, the husband, the wife, right, the fame, all the accolades that we can imagine, who are still unhappy, right, who are still slaves to certain demons in their world and to their lives, right? And I'm here to tell you that they weren't successful, right? Like, what does it mean to have a million dollars or to have everything that you say that you ever, that you ever wanted but you're still suffering with your demons. You're still struggling with those demons, right? You still do, you still are consumed by your depression, by your trauma, right? Uh, you're still lonely, right? You, you, your relationships with people that you love are in terrible conditions, right? Like, what does any of this mean if you are not right in all of those areas, right? So I'm successful because I am at peace with where I am in life. Right? We have been tricked to believe that success come in this order. Right? You go to school, you get a career, you get a husband, wife, you buy a home, and now you are living the American dream. None of that is true. I've done it all the other way. Right? I don't have a college degree, but again, I've done everything I've done in the world. I've taught on college campuses. I've taught Again, spoke at the U.S. Capitol. I've, I've been on any kind of platform you can speak, you can think about. But I've done it all differently than what the world was telling me that I should, right? Success is not all of that. You do not have to go A, B, C, D, and F to get to success. You can go from B to F to J to W, right? We live in a time where there are no rules, right? There are no rules. If you think that success is attached to the things that you acquire, right? If you think that success is attached to age, right? You're wrong again. You can be 55, and, and at 55 you can acquire success, right? You can be 20, you can be 15. Right? There is no age limit, there is no height limit, there is no, no, no race limit or success, right? We can all have it, but we have to master a certain mindset to get it, 
right? We're all, many of us are chasing the wrong things. We're chasing after a dollar sign. We're chasing after a certain comfort level that comes from all of this other stuff, right? But what we truly want is peace, balance, and liberation. Everybody say peace, peace. balance, and liberation. All right? Peace, balance, and liberation is what we truly want. I read a book called Think Rich and Grow Rich. Think Rich and Think Rich, Grow Rich. You know the book. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Think and Grow Rich. Thank you, sir. I can tell you read. I can tell you read. All right? You look like money, too. Well, I see you. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. But <laughs> receive it. Think Rich, Grow Rich, right? Is that right? Think and Grow Rich. Gotcha. But in that book, I kept reading the book, and I kept getting the same message, right? The same message. I'm like, man, what is this? Where is it going? What, what are they talking about? And it kept talking about the secret to success, right? And it kept revealing the same formula over and over and over and over. I'm like, ah, I get it. And if you read the book, it's going to keep telling you this. It's going to tell you that the secret to success is having, number one, a desire. Everybody say desire. desire. All right? And definite purpose. Definite purpose. Right? Say desire. Desire. And definite purpose. So check this out. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that for a quick second. Desire, right, is, is simply and, and ultimately what you want, right? What you want, right? So my desire is I want a wife, right? This is just a scenario, right? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Send me one lower. Ah, I want a wife, right? That's the desire. The definite purpose is I want a wife who is willing to support my dreams, who's going to follow, who's willing to submit not only to me, but to love, right? And I want to have a body like this. All right, that's, that's a joke. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. I, I wanna, okay, I'm serious. <laughs> but if you hear what I'm saying, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, I had a desire, right? And what came after that desire? So y'all ain't following me, man. I had a desire and I had a what? All right. How many of you have a desire in here? Okay, if you have a desire for something out of life, right? A desire. But if I had a conversation with some of you, Right? If I had a one on so I'm a life coach too, by the way. I call myself a success coach because I help people make life make sense and execute on those goals to get everything that you desire out of life. If I had a conversation with some of y'all, I ain't gonna say it, everybody, you know, but if I had a conversation with someone in you and I asked you what your definite purpose was attached to that desire, some of you wouldn't have a full answer. Right? It'd be, I mean, you know, whatever, you were speaking a different language, right? But it's important to be very specific. And y'all have heard this before, to be very specific about what you desire and what you're asking for, but also ultimately what you're working towards, right? So your desire, everybody desire in here, I'm going to tell you the truth, your desire is not to make a lot of money. Right? It's not to, uh, it's, it's, that is not your desire. The reason that your, your desire right now may be to acquire a lot of money because the world has convinced you that a whole lot of money will create you some type of comfort that you desire, but it will not. Right now, Delonte West, a former player, is on the corner of homeless. This man was just in the news headlines a year, two years ago for messing around with LeBron James' mama, right? But now we are seeing pictures of him circulating on social media with a sign asking for money. An NBA player who we thought had reached what you call success. He had the millions of dollars, he had the women, he had the money, he had the, 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 he, he had the career that he had been working towards all his life. But what happened, right? He fell all the way off because obviously there wasn't a definite purpose attached to his desire, 
right? And if you don't have a definite purpose attached to your desire, you will fall off. You, you may get what you want temporarily, but you won't keep it for a lasting time because what you're doing or what you have acquired through that desire is not with definite purpose, right? So again, you've heard it before. You've asked about, you, you've, you've had a desire for something and you've been told that attached to that desire, you need to be specific in what you ask for and how and what you work towards when it relates to that, right? So here we go. I said I want a wife, but I said specifically, I want a wife who submits, who submits to love, who supports my dreams, and who follows me. Bam, right? Specific, right? Many people say, I want success, which is the desire, but they don't say, hey, I want success, and it looks like this. I want success by 55, and it looks like I'm making 45,000 a year, on a beach in San Diego with a man named Jose. <laughs> hey, that's what you desire, right? But you have to be very specific because check this out. If you, if you are, so the definite purpose, this is what the definite purpose is, right? The definite purpose is the exact, so how many of you, how many of you have ever put, um, like I do it all the time, I travel, and I'll just put in, I, I drive back and forth to Atlanta, Georgia, you know, pretty often before this happened, right? And I would just put Atlanta, Georgia in my GPS, right? But it wouldn't get me to exactly where I was going. How many of you to St. Louis, to Memphis, and you just put Memphis in? I ever did that, right? Right? So that means you were just shooting, right? And that's what folks are doing. Again, you say you want success, but you're just shooting in the air, and then you land wherever you may, right? But if you have a sense of definite purpose, right, the definite purpose is the exact address to what you want and desire out of life, right? My art gallery is at 108 East 4th Street, North Middle Rock, Arkansas, 72114. So that's my definite purpose, right? So if I'm, work, if I'm being specific, I'm going to put in my GPS of my life, right, and, 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 and what I am working for, and I'm going to put in the exact details of the address so when I get there and when I'm on my journey, it will take me exactly to where I want to be and to where I am headed in my career and in my life. Definite purpose. Mindset. Again, Stop hustling and let's start working backwards in the way that we've been told that we should. Again, it is not about the money. Don't focus on the money. Focus on the impact, right? If you focus on the impact, if you focus on the impact that you make in your life and in the people's lives around you, that is when you will acquire and keep true success. Don't chase it. Everybody say, don't chase it. Pursue it. All right? I read a book. No, not read a book. I listened to a speaker. His name was Stefan Speaks. He said, and this is for the fellas, all right? He said, don't chase a woman, but pursue her. Right? There's a difference. Same thing for women. Don't chase a man. Pursue him. Right? There's a difference. Right? No, he's like, that's right, brother. Hey, man, I'm, hey, hey, I'm telling you something. All right? Hey, so, so when Stefan uh, Speaks went on to talk, to, as he elaborated on that, he talked about, so again, I'm talking about success, but I'm, I'm breaking it down in layman terms, right? He said, don't chase a woman, right? Because when you chase a woman, it's either one or two things. She's making you chase her, right? because she doesn't want to be caught by you. That's number one, right? Hey, 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 hey I'm saying so. Or number two, she doesn't, she is not convinced that you are what she needs in her life or what she wants. So she's making you chase to kill time, to figure it out, right? So the same thing, so, so if you're chasing a woman or a man, ladies, right, and then you finally get him, this is what's going to happen. You finally got him because you did what? You wore him down. 
You have chased her so much that you wore her down. So now, what she because you chased her so much, if she has settled for you, settled for you, you chased her so much. And this is what's going to end up happening in that relationship with the woman. I'm talking about success, but think about it. This, the woman is the metaphor. Stay with me. Y'all with me? All right? What's going to end up in that relationship with that woman or man, then that you chase them so much and you wear them down, right? You're going to find yourself always having to be the one that is chasing. You're going to always be chasing the entire relationship always be the one having to initiate a date or love or or anything that makes you happy in this relationship because you're going to always be chasing and in some way she's always going to be running. So don't chase after your dreams. Pursue your dreams and then if you do that enough in due time your dreams will walk with you. For the last seven years, I have made my living full time as a poet and creative and speaker. That's all I do. I wake up and I write. Or I work, or, well, today I'm working on the house because my career, right, that I wasn't chasing, right, has allowed me space to go buy cash homes, right, to go, you know, to thank you for Amen. How many years? The Lord is good. It's good, right? But it's allowed me a sense of, again, what are we looking for when we actually want success? Peace, balance, and liberation, right? I didn't chase my career. I pursued it. Now it's walking with me, right? And now I have what you call liberation. I don't have to chase after opportunities or money or gigs, right? They just come to me, right? I ain't begging folks to hire me no more. I'm not, I'm not arguing back and forth. Hey, to come speak, it's going to be 10,000. How about five? No, nah, I said 10. Now let me when you ready. Right? I no longer have to accept any and everything that comes my way because I have what now? Definite. Oh, come on now. Because I have definite purpose, I know exactly what I want, and, and with that, I know exactly what I'm worth, right? I know my exact value. I ain't just taking whatever lands in my lap, because I have definite purpose, right? And once you have definite purpose, right, attached to that desire, right, once you have specific goals and specific ideas of what success means for you, Right? Because again, you can make $25,000 a year at McDonald's and be successful. Listen to me, wealth and poverty is all mindset, right? Because I'm gonna tell you this, the more money you make, for many people, the more out of balance in their lives they become. Because they take on more than they can really handle, right? I met a dude, named Carl, who works at Texas Roadhouse. And when I tell you, Carl is the definition of success. Daughter to 7th Street Elementary every day, right? And I tell you, this man, he'd be busting the table while dancing, and he's happy, like, because he has definite purpose, and his definite purpose is attached to making his child happy, right? To making his wife happy, right? I talk to people often about life being simple, and it is. Life is so simple. It is not complicated. And fortunately, I adopted this mindset when I was 16 years old, right? I always knew, at 16, I knew this. When the mother of my son called me when I was 16 years old and said, we about to have a baby in a couple months, I did not panic. I didn't. You know, I, I didn't think, oh, my life is ruined, or how are we going to feed this child? How are we going to make this happen? I just knew that it was going to happen. I knew it was, I knew all I had to do was feed the baby, keep the baby, educate it, love it, and it would be good. And now that boy, 14 years old, right, I'm 30, about to be 31, and he's good. He's on the football team, you know, he, he pops the girls like 
Wait, wait, he out here doing his thing, you know, like it's, uh, hopefully he ain't doing his thing. Um, like, we, don't, we ain't trying to repeat no cycles, you know. But what I'm saying is that life is simple, right? But we complicate it by allowing ourselves to be impressionable by the world. Again, we have to, it's all about, I'm, I'm real big on this liberation thing, man. And I, Liberating our minds, trusting our own process, right? Again, simplify your life. Stop chasing big things and a lot of things and pursue and attract simple things. I'm about to close out. Listen to this. Say desire. Definite purpose. Definite purpose. And, and, so keep those, please, desire and definite purpose. But I really want you to ask yourself tonight, in your own time, right, is what I am pursuing right now in my career or in my life, does it truly bring me and my family peace, that's your assignment. That's your homework. Everybody say homework. Your homework is to truly ask, write this stuff down. When you get home or when, when you get in your car, type it in your phone, whatever, is what I'm working towards. Is it going to ultimately bring me peace, balance, and liberation? Right? Ask yourself, have I, am I ready? for all the things that I am pursuing in life. I ask you, everybody say, am I ready? Right now, listen, listen, right now, if you got $100,000 cash in your hand, right, would you honestly be able to handle it? Would you be able to handle the pressure? Money and all this stuff that many of us are working toward brings a lot of pressure. And we have to be honest with ourselves, are we ready to handle it, right? Have you dealt with your depression? Have you dealt with those scars, that trauma, right? Have, ha have you healed from relationships, right? Are you whole? Because that's what matters. Nothing else matters. Are you whole? That's all, I ain't even got no fancy in it, but here's my, oh, I do got a fancy in it, I'm sorry. Because I'm a poet, and I always got to end with a poem. And it goes like this. Everybody say, oh, do it then. All right, here we go. All right, my, I'm, I, I, yeah. What's up, my, my, about 5,000 people watching. Yeah, all right. And, uh, yeah, we, we got 40. Oh, we, we packed on Zoom. All right. So I got a poem I do all the time in my closing, and it goes like this. I'm gonna sing the song on the first time, on the second time, you guys are gonna start singing it with me. Everybody say, oh yeah. oh yeah? It goes like this, I'm gonna sing it. You, you got a lot to smile for you. You got a lot to live for you. You got a lot to do so you. You can't give up now. You, you got a lot to smile for you. You got a lot to live for you. You got a lot to do so you. You can't give up now. So, get the power for all humans who ever had to know to question their own existence. You know, God called me and told me to tell you that he designed you in perfect on purpose. There is nothing in your mirror you should question. Your flaws are beautiful, accept them. Don't listen to what the naysayers be telling. Tell them that you ain't buying what they selling. Because what you already got is an unbiased commodity. You came straight from the source and you were born pure gold when you pop on your mother's belly. Ain't nothing you need missing. 
You are extraordinarily exquisite figure that picture you hang on the walls of hearts like art there is no need to alter your image for the rest of your days be bold and resilient and the toughest of times i want you to rise from the ashes like a phoenix your presence is a present on christmas it's anticipated by many they sit and wait on your arrival like children wait on santa to come down the chimney your entrance into the room is grand nothing about you minuscule you are well-rounded 360, no degrees missing. For the rest of your days, you are on a mission because you are. You, you got a purpose and you are on purpose. Don't live life like you are accident. You are fully insured, so rest assured that your greatness is already installed. I saw a man who was homeless and hungry but he was smiling from cheek to cheek. When in my opinion, he had two good reasons to complain, but his joy is a reminder that there was always a ray of sunshine somewhere. And just because you don't see it immediately don't mean it ain't there. Sometimes you gotta open your eyes, lean in and look a little bit closer. There's always beauty in the blemishes behind the borders of the basics in the background, like a background singer with just as much gifts from God as the girls and the guys in the front. And just because they shine bright don't make your light dim. Stop comparing. You are not like them. And just because they got it doesn't mean you don't. Sometimes you just got to be patient because maybe your miracle's marinating and your blessing is still baking and you can't rush perfection. God is an artist, so respect his. You are a magnificent masterpiece made in the image of the Most High with the faith of a mustard seed. You, and that's magic. So why are you worrying when you're supposed to be the child of a warrior? You got it. Wow. Everything you ever desired is already inside yeah. your heart. Yeah. There was no need for a Wizard of Oz when all you got to do is open your eyes and realize that it's always been there the entire time. Now sing with me one more time. You you got a lot to smile for you. You got a lot to do for you. You got a lot to do so you. You can give up now. One more time. You. You got a lot to smile for you. You got a lot to live for you. You got a lot to do so you. You can give up now. me today stay black stay beautiful stay purposeful and all that good stuff um and if you want to meet with me in any form or fashion uh you can follow chris james journey you can just put in chris james journey on any social media platform you can google search the uh, website the website now James, Journey, Chris James, Journey. Uh, also, I, I did bring a few of my uh, uh, children's books. Oh, Dr. Paul. Uh, a few of my children's books, Joe Got Flow, which is a dope children's book that I wrote uh, about a year ago. It's about a kid named Joseph who wants to be a rapper, but learns that in order to be a rapper, he must first learn to be a great writer and poet. So throughout each chapter, he learns about a different figure of language skill, metaphor, symbols, attitudes, all of it. Great book. Check it out. And if you have any questions for me, uh, I'll be here for the next few minutes. And you can come and me. I'll be right here. And uh, thank y'all for having me. Thank you, man, for always inviting me back. Yeah. Thanks for my third time. Yeah. So thank y'all for having me. Peace and love. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. 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 Another man, another man. I love messages like that. Love it, love it, love it. I love messages like that because it is pure gold. If you took that and wrapped that into your life, man, man. And it's taken me a long time to get where I am, and that dude is already on his way. Oh, my. Um, I like the part, and this is it, where, oh, Dr. Gilbert is hollering for me because she knows that I'm about to get on the road. Come on, Dr. Gilbert. Give Dr. Gilbert a hand. She has some announcements for you. Good morning, everybody.
And thank you to Jane's very, very inspired message. So I hope you all got something out of that. I know I did. Um, so I'm, I'm still on my journey too. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I haven't got here yet either. And listen, I don't want to bring you down from all of that good stuff that you just heard from Mr. Jane. But, but, y'all know when I when I come up that it's not always good news. It's only the students are there. Zoom land, y'all looking good. Yay! That's my that's my Mississippi um my my Mississippi drawl and slang, right? But y'all got it too. Arkansas has it too, y'all. <laughs> Y'all got to see, but y'all looking good. Hey. Yes, I'm so proud of you all. Yes, yes, yes. But listen, I'm just going to speak about my class today. I'm not going to talk about anybody else's class. And because the reason I say that, because if I'm doing it for my class, I know that you're doing it for other classes as well. I know that I hear some of you all are saying that you all are doing the work. And students, you're saying that you're doing it in mind as well. But when I'm going in to do the graded work, it's not there. So I don't know if, if you're in my class, if you're in Zoom land, um, I, I, sent, I sent one class an email this morning. I didn't have a chance to send the other class an email before I came to chapel, but I'm going to I'm gonna do that once I get back to the office. So if you're in my class, please check your email and you may want to have a question for me while I'm standing here and Ms. Uh, Canley will let me know if you have put a question for me in the chat. But listen, you, who would have thought that next week we would be at midterm, right? Who would have thought? The semester is half gone. And so, and we're still, you know, and we're still, um, asking you all to make sure that you're checking with us to make sure that you know how to get on canvas that you know how to access your uh, your your information so that you can be successful and we can't help you if we don't know right we can we can't help you so those of you that in most of my class most students in my class have not done the work that I looked at this morning. I went down each one. And some of you have, and, and, and if you're looking at your assignments while I'm on, on if you're in my class, then you, you may want to have questions. Mr. Stewart, I know that you're in my class. Can you look? Um, because there's a lot of assignments that's not graded. And, and what I said to my class is, I'm not going to do a midterm um, I'm not going to do a midterm exam. I'm going to let the assignments be your, the completed assignments, I'm going to let the completed assignments be your midterm grade. <laughs> That's me. I cannot speak for any, I cannot speak for Mr. Ketty. I can't speak for um, Mr. Eggwam. I can't speak for them. I don't know what they're doing, but, just, but that's me. <laughs> So listen, but I'm begging and pleading though right now so that if you are having issues, please let us know. Please, please let us know. Every Wednesday I get up and I say the same thing and students, you all are not following through. I don't know what else, I don't know. If you, can, if you have an idea of something that we can do differently than what I'm doing right now or what I'm doing every Wednesday, please let me know if you know how to do it differently because you all are the one that, that, that's doing it. Maybe you have a different idea of, of how, we can how we can reach you because right now it's critical and we were at, we were at midterm and again, some students, we need you to check in. We need you to check in with, the, with your teachers and by, and by doing that, you are able to just log into your work. If you can't log into your work, please let us know. And 
And if you can't log in, come, come to the campus between eight o'clock and five o'clock, Monday through Friday. Now, if you're in my class, again, I'm gonna be out tomorrow and Friday. So, and then my, next week is gonna be a busy week. So, uh, because you're gonna have midterms next week. Okay? So please, please, please let us know that, that you're having issues. Um, any questions for me? Y'all got it? Jeremiah, you got it? I need you to write something in chat. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. He told me he was going to join last week, so and he did. But I don't know. I don't know how to help you if you. Uh, but remember, I said that um, I've given you every opportunity to to ask, and then at the end of the semester, that you're having some issues, go see Reverend Mary. <laughs> Go see Reverend Mary. Don't come see me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just teasing. But you can come see me. But I don't know how much help I can be to you at the end of the semester. I, I really don't know how much help I can be at the end of the semester because I've asked and I've begged and I've pleaded every Wednesday for you all to 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 let us know that you have that you. You know, if any issues that you're having, signing on, accessing the class, maybe you don't know where to go to get the assignment. Like I've had a couple of students that come to me and say, I'm confused, Dr. Gilbert. So I've had to come in and show them in person how to, how to get to the class. You know, how to get to the assignment. Not that they know how to, they knew how to get to Canvas, but they didn't know how to log in once they got into the assignment to my, to my, my, my book. They didn't know what to do, so so I walked them through that. So if you're not if you're not sure how to do that, please come up and uh, and we can we can work that out. We can work it out, okay? So I don't know, Miss um, Tammy. Can you think of anything else? I don't know of anything else that I need to uh, to say. But thank you all. Those that are doing well, I want to praise you and thank you for doing that because. You are, have shown the tenacity to uh, make sure that you that you are here to get a quality education, and you're holding us accountable for that. I appreciate that. So that shows that shows character. Okay, a quiz. Who knows the four C's? Quiz. Who knows the four C's? If you know them, write them in the chat. No, you're right. Four C's. Four C's, everybody. Those are what. See, you got three of them. Character, citizenship. You said to. That's okay. That's three. Somebody said it. Somebody said it. Competency. Yes. Let me, students, before you all leave, that should be etched in your mind. That, that those four things, those four words, because we, we, we pride ourselves on practicing those, those four things every day that we're that we're here so if anybody ever asks you that are outside of shorter college what are the four c's of shorter college you should be able to rattle those off right away okay because we talk about those things all the time when president green gets up those are the things that he says right 
So it should not, no one should be caught off guard when, that, when someone asks you what the four C's are, okay? All right, so thank you all so much. Give it a hand. She simply wants to help, as do the rest of us. And um, reminding you that we do have a team here at Shorter College uh, that we call the Canvas Task Force Team. Please come in and check in with them and see where we are. Uh, if you're behind in your work, come and check in with them. Usually you will find them in the, um, uh, in the lab, in the computer lab. Please come and check in with them. Thank you so much. Um, I think there's Ms. Pamela Mitchell over there and Ms. Marilyn Hayes stopped by my office. Uh, I have a, because you all pushed and pushed until you got the four C's correct, stop by my office, I have a, a $10 gift card for you, all right? <laughs> all right, um, now let's stand then, because I think our, we, our time has, we've exhausted our time, and let us sing the alma mater together. And again, just before we sing, let us give Mr. Chris James another hand. Yay! And remember, he has books that he that uh, that are for sale. How much are they, Mr. Uh, they usually fifty dollars, but today they're fifteen. Yeah. Today they are fifteen. They're usually fifty. Hey, see him. All right. Now let's sing uh, the alma mater. Help me out. One, two, three, four. Oh, sure we all love thee. You made the way for us. Our prayers, our aims, our loyal claims shall all be in thy name. We pledge to live in noble deeds, live high by grand ideas, serving a world that is in need and live a life that's real. Help those who laud and praise this day by grand truth to express. Oh, alma mater, we do pray that thou shalt live for a everybody. That thou shalt live for a mother, that thou shalt live for a oh short a college, we do pray that thou shalt live for a thank you.